Hi everyone, I'm Anish and welcome back, back to my channel. So today we'll solve this uh, like voltage transfer characteristics for CMOS buffer. So I hope you have watched my previous video where I have like uh, explained the pulse input for a CMOS buffer, right? How the output will look, okay? And explain like what is a CMOS buffer and how do we solve that circuit, analyze the circuit basically. So here like this is not exactly a ramp input, right? What we're doing is going from zero to VDD and then going down. This will help us understand the voltage transfer characteristics of the CMOS buffer. How? Uh, I will just explain you in the next few slides, right? So, first, uh, what we'll assume is that from pulse input, right, what we have understand, if the input is zero, right, if the input is zero, if the input is zero, right, then our VT, we are like, uh, our output is at the VTHP, right, mode of VTHP. So, here what we'll assume that, yeah, this is already reached to that state only like this state only so if our input is zero right so this output will remain at mode of vthp so for this to understand you have to uh, like watch the previous video okay so yeah that's the first assumption that we'll take now our uh, this uh, input right this is time axis actually our input is increasing from zero to vdd like a ramp right like a ramp so but will uh, any of this mos turn on and mos or pmos will turn on so this is already at uh, mode of vtp so let me take the circuit the next page so this voltage right this capacitor is already charged to uh, let me delete this and okay plus minus mode of VTHP right this capacitor is already charged to plus minus mode of VTHP okay so now what is the mode of VTHP basically we can say this say it like this this is one volt okay one volt as like uh, already taken from the previous video also so one volt now what is the VIN initially VIN is zero right initially VIN is zero so is anything on so for this PMOS to turn on right PMOS turn on that like uh, VSG should be more than one volt the threshold so no this won't turn on and for this NMOS to turn on, the VGS should be more than one volts. This is minus one for now. So no, this won't also turn on, okay. So when will this turn on? Basically when th this is one volts, right? So this doesn't have any uh, discharging path for this, like to the PMOS or uh, like this doesn't have any charging path through the NMOS. So this will remain constant. So this voltage is keeping on increasing. So how long will it increase till any one of this MOSFETs turn on? So what I can observe is this will never turn on, right? Because the gate is only uh, going up okay so vsg is only reducing vgs is increasing right so how much vgs has to be for this uh, mos to turn on it has to be vtn right which is one volts in our case so this has to be two volts right this will be two volts so vgs n should be greater than equals to vtn vthn so what is uh, vgs vg is input voltage and vs is fixed right to one volts and it has to be greater than equals to one volts so vn has to be greater than equals to two volts or how we can write expression wise basically we can write this as uh, vthp plus mod of vthp plus vtn right like expression wise but value wise it has to be more than two volts so up until V in is between 0 to uh, 2 volts, the output voltage will remain constant, 1 volts. So let me draw the graph up until 0 to V in, right? Sorry, up until 0 to 2 volts for V in. <coughs> so this is constant and this is 0 and this is 2 volts. And this is what? This is mod of VTP or we can like write for now of one volts and later i will write in expression wise so this is mod of uh, this is one volts so after two volts what is happening so uh, in this region right in this region both and mos and pmos are off right in this region both NMOS and PMOS are off okay after this NMOS is uh, turning on so yeah after this this is V out so after this the VGSN is more than the threshold voltage so NMOS will turn on again it will be replaced with like a current source or what we can assume here is 
basically the nmos is in saturation right as proven in the previous uh, video from the pulse jetboard video nmos will be in saturation this time so uh, that that is that shouldn't be a doubt so i have explained in the previous video what we can do is here is to like understand this in a simpler manner what we can assume this as a common train amplifier how i will show okay so this is the nmos right and this is the pdd so this is fixed right this is fixed and this is the v out okay and the below part right the below part is off pmos is off only okay so we are giving the input here so if we if i increase some delta v volts here so what will happen to this uh, source node right so what we can see that this is the dc voltage right so this terminal is common wait for the input to the k terminal and we're taking it out from the drain terminal so this is a common drain amplifier amplifier so this is a uh common drain amplifier and what does a common drain amplifier do it basically acts as a voltage buffer right so if you increase some delta v here then the same amount of delta v will be increased here like in small signal analysis so this is how like i got to understand in like the best way possible i understand this but uh, if you have something uh, better way of understanding this concept then like you can put it down in the comments below uh, so yeah uh, so like this acts as a voltage buffer okay so this acts as a voltage buffer so if i increase some delta v here this will also increase delta v but up until how much it will it will increase right so the v in right v in will maximum go to vdd right it will go to vdd but this v out can max go to uh, vdd minus vdn as proved from the pulse input also from here also you can understand after like um, this uh, goes to vdd it can't go vdd minus vdn more than this this output voltage why because if it goes more than that then this nmos will be off and pmos is anyways off so there is no discharging path okay from that also you can understand so basically what will happen this uh let me copy this graph right let me copy this graph So if I copy this graph, if this is increase delta V, right? This increase delta V, this will also give increase delta V. So the slope will be one. Okay. So this will also increase delta V up until how much? Up until let's say VD, right? So VDD is five volts. Five volts. And how, up until how? What value it increases to? It increases to four volts, right? VDD minus VTN. Okay. So yeah, this is. Up until uh, this V in is go like going up, up until V D D. Okay. Now what happens if it goes down, right? If it goes down. So let me again take the circuit, and this time the output voltage is charged to uh, four volts, right? This time it is charged to. Four volts, and this time our input is at five volts, but it is reducing, right? So what I can see that this uh, gate voltage of this NMOS is reducing, and this source voltage is constant because, like, this is this is this will off, right? This will be off because this VGS is decreasing, so this will be off. So there is no charging path, and this PMOS is off anyways because the source voltage is lower than the uh, gate voltage, so this will be off. But how long will it be off? So when the source voltage, right, goes below, below, below. Then the uh, sorry when the gate voltage goes below 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 then the source voltage by one threshold one threshold right so this VSG P will be on when uh, like this is greater than the mod of VTHP right so like what is the VSG VS is four for now minus VG which is VN should be greater than equals to like we have already derived this in the previous uh, video also this is one so VN has to be less than equals to three. So V is reducing, 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 and when it reaches three volts, right? So this PMOS will be on, and this will again discharge. Okay, this will again discharge. So what will happen this time? So this NMOS is off anyways. This NMOS is off anyways. So let me draw the circuit again. Again, this PMOS will also act as a common drain amplifier. How? Like. 
this is the output and this is the drain right and this is the input okay this is the input so what is happening like let me mark the terminals this is source this is gate and this is drain so again the drain is common terminal and we're giving the input at the gate and we're taking the output from the source so this is a common drain amplifier common drain amplifier okay common drain amplifier so what will happen basically again it will be like a voltage buffer only voltage buffer only so um, so what will happen if i reduce the voltage by delta v right so minus delta v okay then this will also be reduced by minus delta v up until what it will reduce to like up until what voltage can it reduce to obviously when this uh, vsg right when this vsg is greater than equals to mod of vthp so this will keep on reducing or like what is the uh, minimum voltage uh, voltage the input can go it can go to zero volts so uh, vs right vs the output voltage like this is already been derived in the previous video so uh, v out minus vg vg is zero volts only should be greater than mod of vtp so our v out at minimum can go down to one volts one volts right so yeah uh, yeah let me take the uh, this characteristics again like one thing i forgot to mention here like uh, yeah in this state right so v in has to go below 3 volts for this to like uh, for this to like discharge right for the discharge so in between there will be one uh, characteristics i missed that part so let me copy this so v in is reducing right let me just take this yeah v v in is reducing right v in is reducing but v out isn't changing it is constant because both of them are off and there isn't any discharging path as I explained here right so v in uh, this pmos will be on only when this v in is less than 3 volts right v in is less than 3 volts so up until 3 volts like it will go like this only it will remain at 4 volts only okay so yeah let me just delete this a bit like this remain at 4 volts only so this is let's say this is 3 volts okay after the 3 volts what is happening we are reducing by delta v and this is also reducing by delta v and at max what it can go to this can go to this 1 volts right so this will follow a hysteresis loop okay so and this will go along so yeah that's how this uh, voltage transfer characteristics we get so let me draw the complete characteristics here so let me copy this so in this region right in this okay i can just draw the regions because we have different regions so let's not draw the regions <coughs> so yeah this will reduce now delta v and this will go to uh, one volts like as explained here as explained here this will act as a voltage buffer and this will go until one volts if we reduce by delta v the source will also go to down to delta v only okay so yeah and like how are we seeing this is in saturation that is like you, you either was the previous video and you just figure it out yourself like whether it's it like the pmos is in saturation or not okay so yeah i think that's the transfer characteristics for this uh, whole circuit let me just draw the uh, like uh, write the expression and not the exact values absolute values okay let me delete this uh like if i write the expression then you will like be able to understand and solve it for any any like threshold voltage or any input voltage right so let me write this a bit matter matter this is v out this is v in what is this this was actually mod of vtp okay let me delete all this we write it like this this was actually mod of uh, vthp plus vtn right uh, vth n and what was this this is basically vdd minus this exact same value right exact same value just in negation this time around okay and what is this this is uh let me write this in different color 
VDD, right? This is VDD. Okay. So yeah, and what is this? This this two voltage, right? So this will be VDD minus VTHN, and this is mod of VTHP. Like this, all this can be understood by previous video, or you can understand here also. Okay. So yeah, uh, this is basically the uh, CMOS uh, buffer analysis of voltage transfer characteristics for a CMOS buffer. So if you like this video, then do it. Please hit the like button, and if you like like my concept and how I explained, then do please hit the subscribe button because like 80% of you guys aren't subscribing. I don't know like what is the issue. So yeah, please do hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.